Hi, I'm Gino Jobert, and welcome back. If you've made it to part three in this series, uh, good on you. Um, we're, we're going to uh, expound even further on the previous two videos and share some more new information. This way, we can help you, the viewer, uh, especially those who are seeking to uh, maybe discover some of the hidden secrets or... Maybe you're in a position where you're not quite happy with the way your life is going right now and you're looking to make a change. And sometimes these changes can be difficult because you, um, most of us are not really cognizant to the fact of how many belief systems we have that did not originate with our own way of thinking. It, it was given to us by someone else. So I want to share this. I, I'll never forget back in the year 2000, a movie came out called The Skulls with Paul Walker. And as soon as uh, I was watching TV with uh, with a girlfriend at the time, and and as soon as the, the TV started showing all the the, the trailer and everything. The first thing I said is, oh, I could tell you everything about this movie. And she looked at me and she gave me a crazy look like, well, how is that possible, Gino? Um, it, the movie just came out. And so The Skulls was a movie based on um, a secret fraternity um, that's at uh, Yale University. Now, Yale yeah. Harvard both have these secret uh, societies, um, and, and the only way you can get in is someone approaches you, and you go through what they call an initiate screening. But where I found out about this secret society was through a book I read back in 1992 called Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper. That began me on a serious journey of hating the system, hating authority, because I realized that the education system was broken. We have the same system in place minus a few changes ever since World War II. Now, why is that? Every video in this series, I will mention the bloodline families because people do not realize how much control they have over our aspect of life. We're taught and conditioned to believe that the government can provide the solution. Well, if you then discover that the government is actually working against you, how could they ever provide the solution? Our own government, if you were to Google 1871, is nothing more than a corporation. Now, why is that a problem for me? Because a corporation has corporate laws that they have to adhere to. If you or I have a corporation, the laws that we write and the bylaws that we write within the structure of that corporation only pertain to those who work for the corporation. So if a government is really a corporation and thus a de facto government, what you're dealing with is trickery on a larger scale. What you're dealing with is a crime syndicate that is operating under false pretenses. So they really have no true authority. It's only been given to them because we believe in their authority. So back to the movie, The Skulls. If you look at these bloodline families, I've said earlier that they control a lot of the secrets that could actually set humanity free, that could end all the wars and violence. But see, once I started uncovering one lie upon another, I had to start following the money. And when you follow the money, it'll always lead to who's really calling that shot. For example, some of you may be familiar with a guy by the name of George Soros. 
Well, he, he's the person that funds a lot of things that create a lot of chaos in our country. Here's a man from Hungary, and he's very, very wealthy, but he's also very evil. Now, these types of people, their only primary concern is to create chaos because with that chaos, it's so much easier for them to have power and control over you and me. So the movie goes to show how when an initiate is selected by these secret societies, their life changes instantly from a financial standpoint because you're now backed and endorsed by the money. So, <clears throat> I'll never forget her reaction to one, how do I know this? Well, that brings up another question. So, I, I've, I've been reading books and, and searching things for years, way before the internet. Um, and so, while I'm here, it, this goes to show, um, one book that I had read because I always keep saying that I'm going to talk about the music business and the music industry and the big difference between the two is there was a book called This Business and Music written by two entertainment attorneys named Shamel and Krasilovsky. And that book by some, by most people actually in the music industry will tell you that that is like the Bible to the music business. And so if, if you want to learn the roles of a promoter, um, or how to um, gain access and entry into so many aspects of the industry, that book is your go-to source. Um, just like today, in today's time, Google is a lot of people's go-to source. Now, that can be a good thing. That can also be a bad thing. So why could it possibly be a bad thing? Remember, if you control the information, you can manipulate so many people. First time that I noticed the power of big tech was when I did a Google search on a particular term. I can't even remember what that term is now. But I remember a friend saying, well, um, how did you find that? I said on Google. And she said, well, I, what keywords did you use? So I gave her the keywords. She looked up. She says, but I'm not getting the same result as you. I said, really? So why is that? So you would think if you're using, let's say, three keywords, uh, best music video. Okay, we'll just use that as an example. If you do that search, you would think that if anybody did that search, they would come up with the same listing, you know, right? in order, but that's not the case. So AI, artificial intelligence, which there's been years and years of research with some of the brightest minds in the world, and these bright minds are usually locked away in compartmentalized workstations. Could be in Quantico, Virginia, could be anywhere. But what these people do is they're giving all the ammunition that the ruling elite need to better control the masses. Remember I said in an earlier video, I really don't like control. Why? Because we're conditioned to believe that governments are a good thing, that they can help us. In actuality, there's actually been case studies. There's been a couple of places around the globe where there's no government involved. And so you wonder, well, you're so used to being controlled in a sense by your government, regardless of what country you're in, that you may even have a hard time fathoming, well, how could that work? There'd be mad chaos or, well, why do you think that? Begin with that. Why do you think? That would be the case. But there's something called self-governance. And I can give you two examples. There's a couple of 
French Polynesian islands where there's no structured form of government as we know it. There's only self-governance. So let's say in, in, in this setting here in the Prince, French Polynesian islands, they will not allow Westerners to even approach the island because they do not want their way of life which is a beautiful way of life, to be extinguished. For example, in Western thought, if we had 100 monkeys, and let's just say 20 crates of bananas were dropped off to these monkeys, but one monkey was like the strongest out of all of them, and he was the most feared, and he started killing all the other monkeys so that he could hoard all those bananas for himself. We would probably have millions of dollars exercised in researching that type of behavior. Yet, if you were to look at a human being that does the same thing, they have billions and billions of dollars. They're not being researched. They're put on the cover of Forbes magazine and Fortune magazine. So why is there such a gross discrepancy if we're the civilized human beings? When in actuality, it's the ruling elite who creates all the chaos. So if you look at the money trail and you see, okay, who owns Boeing. Who owns Lockheed Martin? Because these are two of the biggest contractors that provide warlike equipment to the military industrial complex. So I'm not going to give you all the answers because then you're going to get lazy in your forms of research. Well, you remember I talked in the other video about a group called KBR? Well, KBR is part of this whole group, too. Now, they get all these government contracts, right? So you see how the money stays within the money? So they get a lot of big-time government contracts. The same owner of KBR is also the owner of, um, of a company called uh, BlackRock and when you start following the trails and you see how they all kind of lead back to the top to one individual that's how the world really works so if a government is known for instilling a three phase agenda that three phase is, is they create the problem so that they can see your reaction and offer the solution. We see your, your beginning problem point is they created the problem. We as, as sentient beings in this 3D realm and existence, we only have one guarantee and that's we're going to live and we're going to die. Well, die is really a, a very or term for a lot of people to understand because see if you think you are this body you may need to look into some more information and what I mean by that is if you have a car outside in your driveway what do you more assimilate that car as being the body of the car or the engine Without that engine, that car is going nowhere. The same holds true for our very existence. There's an engine that drives this avatar, this flesh and bone. And that engine is known as what they call an energetic body. Depending on where you get your information, you may discover that there's even more than one energetic body. But one thing we do know is science has discovered and uncovered um, through lots of uh, research and studies that 
Um, they can tell when a person dies when the energetic body leaves this avatar. Pretty amazing. Well, then if the real you is the energy moving this body, that's the real you. Think about that. That is the real you. Now, if you were to look at the 12 universal laws, okay, and you were to, uh, you know, kind of read up on, on what the 12 laws are, um, you, you'll get very intrigued by the laws of energy, okay? Now, why do I say that? Well, think about it like this. Energy is never stagnant. Energy is always moving. So, for example, the law of vibration, all right? At a microscopic level, everything is in constant motion, vibrating at a specific frequency. This applies to matter, but also one's personal frequency as well. This law says that our vibrational frequency can inform our lived experience. I'll give you an example. So, you may be able to receive money, but perhaps you can't hold on to it. Because vibrationally, you could be operating on a lower level. So, when you look at that, and then, let's say, because I, I kind of mentioned the secret in a previous video, but I said, the law of attraction without the law of action is null and void. No different than Faith without works is dead. Same thing, same principle, okay? The law of inspired action is closely related to the law of attraction. The law of inspired action is all about taking those real, actionable steps to invite what we want into our lives. Often, the inspiration comes from within. Inspired action is that gentle internal nudge. It's not always a plan of action. So how do you apply it? So you get this inspiration. For example, I get an idea to write a song. And maybe the melody line comes first, maybe the hook. It doesn't matter. But without the law of action, if I don't go and write it out, play it out, and just simply think about it, do I ever have that song? No, because it never gets finished. So, it, to practice that law, it's all about slowing down, getting quiet, and creating space for internal guidance. When we let go of our need to arrange and control how things work out, and are instead open to all possibilities, it makes room for new ways of achieving the goals that we might not have considered otherwise. So there's another universal law called the law of perpetual transmutation of energy. This law states that on an energetic level, everything in the universe is constantly evolving or fluctuating. Every action is preceded by a thought, with thoughts themselves having the power to eventually manifest into our physical reality. Ever been around like a negative person and you felt your own positivity, depleting. That's one example. But it can also work the other way around. Higher frequencies transmute lower ones when applied with intention. Remember the story of how in Indiana um, I was shocked because I realized that one person, because I had the intent to change the energy in the room, saw it come to fruition. So yeah, it doesn't just work one way. It, it works both ways. So what, what you may want to consider is um, how is it possible
that they aren't teaching us these universal laws in school. To give a remedial understanding of what it takes for something to become a law, it starts with the hypothesis, which is the initial thought. Then it moves to a theory when applied action to such hypothesis can give it weight, can give it some sense of, okay, well, this may be a possibility. But the biggest step, and this is in anything science, the biggest step is to go from theory to law. Now, in order for something to go from a hypothesis to a theory, We've just shown that. In order for it to go from a theory to a law, it has to be quantified unequivocally. So, give you a perfect case in point. Eddie Van Halen had a son named Wolfgang Van Halen. And Wolfgang used to uh, study school, uh, music in school, and uh, the teacher gave him a failing grade on one of his musical assignments. And Eddie asked Wolfgang, he said, well, how did you fail that? What happened? And she said it was too much improvisation. Hmm. And, and why is that a bad thing? Eddie asked. The kid didn't know. He says, can you do me a favor when you go to school tomorrow and you tell his teacher? It's music theory, not music law. Hmm. Good point. So, the 12 universal laws are proven to be unequivocally true and accurate. But there are a lot of theories out there that are supported, like their law, and they're not. Music theory is good, but you can ask some of the best musicians on the planet. I'll give you one example. Victor Wooten. If you ever heard Victor Wooten play a bass, man, he is special. He is, he is unbelievable. Now, me personally, because I happen to know a little bit more about Vic. Beautiful person, man. Beautiful person. He has that heart that I can identify with and it resonates with me. And, and Vic... Vic will show you. He'll, he'll show you how he's not thinking about music theory when he plays. He's just feeling the music. And so if, when you ascend and you begin to elevate your energies and you begin to feel better and better, you don't have one hurtful bone in your body. And why is that? Because to get to this level of understanding, somewhere along the way, you're going to discover something that everything in the universe is connected. Why is that important? Because see, the best model of teaching someone anything is, you, in order to be a good teacher, you have to be a good student. You have to be willing to learn, too. And what's the ways that best helped you learn? Well, there's more than one way that we all learn. So there isn't a one-size-fits-all method. You really have to take each person case by case. Um, I happen to use the style of analogy. That is my preferred method of delivery. Because it shows that more people can understand or relate to that delivery method than other methods employed. But if you take and you realize that every, I mean, and believe, because it is true, but once you believe that everything is connected in the universe, then you have the how and the why karma works the way it does. So if in essence you or me, because we're all connected, if I hurt you, I'm hurting me because that mirror reflects. All right? So while 
You mean I can reduce the amount of pain in my life by just omitting that one behavior. I'm going to stop being mean to people. I'm just going to be nice. Doesn't mean you allow people to walk over you. If they want to cross those boundaries with you, you just simply remove yourself from that scenario. You walk away. You leave. See, those are the things like different messianic archetypes through history have shown us. But people are too busy following the messenger rather than taking heed and instilling the message. So I, I want to leave you with this. If you can think of some, oh, if you can think of some things that um, that you employ in your daily walk that makes you have an overall great experience on a daily basis, feel free to leave those in the comments. If you like the aspect of the world, just people killing each other and all that, these videos aren't for you. We're on a different energetic plane. Go live your existence. But when I stop hating others because of things they did to me, I, I gained so much peace. It was unbelievable. So that's why I can wake up in the morning with a smile on my face. Because I have gratitude that I've done some good things yesterday. And today I'm going to do some good things too. Because you can't outgive the universe. When you do good things for others and for yourself. You can't forget about you when you do good things for yourself and for others. Guess what? The mirror reflects and it comes back to you. Always. Not sometimes, not most of the time. And a lot of times, whoever you did a good deed for, it may not always come back from them, but it comes from somebody else. So do you really want peace in your life? If you do, you will get it. Because you know what? There's so many other goals that you aspire to achieve through the previous parts of your journey. And you went and got them. But now you're taking the time to work on making you a better person. And I applaud you for that. That is very noble. In a world filled with so many things that do not align with my energetic field. I don't give too much time and attention to that because it does not belong to me. What belongs to me is inner peace, happiness, love, joy, bliss. And so daily, it's a conscious decision. A thought may pop up from time to time. You know, you really could get mad at this person because they did that to you. And I tell my that thought, I say, or I could not. I'm going to let you go because you don't belong here. And I'll go back to thinking about things that, that bring bliss and happiness to me. It's really that simple. When you say, oh, but that's hard, guess what? You make that your reality. You could just as easily say, oh, that's easy. I'm going to throw that thought out the window. Sometimes the hardest solutions actually have the simplest solutions. But you can't resist it because it requires a change. And this is what time for a change is all about. I thank you for your time and may you have a great day. Gino Joe Berry. Peace. You know what? I think we ought to do one more thing before we really go. And for those who are still watching... I want you to know that there is no greater feeling than inner peace. You could come upon um, a windfall of money. You could um, have a great day in particular. But when you have inner peace, every day is a great day. So with that being said,
ready for that change, you'll make it. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.